if you've done a regression course uh, outside of the forecasting world, you will almost certainly have been told two things. Uh, one is correlation is not the same as causation. And so you need to be, be careful when you're interpreting the model. And secondly, beware of multicollinearity. But in the forecasting context, these two things uh, need to be treated slightly differently when you're not forecasting. So let's look at them. Firstly, correlation is not causation, which is, which is obviously true. Just because two things are correlated doesn't mean one's causing the other. And in a, when you're doing a, a regression model for forecasting, it doesn't really matter much. Uh, if x, x, your predictor variable x may not be causing y, but it can still be a good predictor. It can still be a useful model. Uh, so let, let's take an example. Suppose you, you're working for a swimming pool and you're trying to predict the number of swimmers that use your pool every day. And you notice that it's highly correlated with the number of ice cream sold. Well, you could build a model that uh, predicts the number of swimmers based on the number of ice creams. Uh, of course, then you have a problem of how do you predict the number of ice creams sold, but that's a that's another issue. But it is a it is a viable model, um, even though ice creams are not causing the swimmers. So correlations can be useful for forecasting even when there's no causation going on. However, it is usually better to find causal relationships if you can. And in the example of the swimming pool, you would also know that number of swimmers is going to be correlated with the number with the temperature and you could predict the number of swimmers using your pool every day if you knew what the temperature was going to be on that day and that will be a stronger model uh, because the relationships causal and relationship causal relationships tend to be stronger than non-causal relationships so it is worth thinking about a little bit but you don't have to be too concerned about whether your predictors are actually causing why we're simply looking for a model that gives us useful forecasts uh, and finding predictors that help. The second issue that sometimes gets talked about in regression is multicollinearity. And that will occur when you've got two predictors that are quite strongly related to each other. Uh, so the correlation between your two predictors is going to be close to plus or minus one. It can also happen when you get a combination of some of the predictors as highly related to another predictor. Uh, that happens in the dummy variable trap where you might put in a uh, dummy variable for every seasonal period. And as we've learned, you, you don't need that, you need one less than that. But if you did, you put them all in, you fall into this problem of multicollinearity because the, the last seasonal dummy that you add is actually one minus the sum of the other ones. And so you end up with a um, linear relationship between the predictors. It can also happen in a third way where you get a linear combination of some set of predictors is highly related to a linear combination of another set of predictors. Any of these things cause multicollinearity. Now, why is this a problem? Well, if it's an exact multicollinearity, then you can't actually fit the, fit the regression. But even if it's, if it's not exact, if the correlations are close, you know, higher than 0.9, but less than one, uh, or between minus one and minus 0.9, you can have some difficulties uh, in estimating the coefficients. Good statistical software such as R and, and other reputable statistics packages do their best to use good methods for estimating the parameters so that this is not, not a really big concern unless, unless the correlations are very, very close to plus or minus one. Uh, there are software packages around that don't use good algorithms and the most egregious example of that is Microsoft Excel, which you should never use for any serious statistical work. The other problem that can happen is if you fit a model and you're interested in doing inference on the model, you might be doing statistical tests on whether the particular predictor is significant, has a significant effect or not. If you have multicollinearity, then those tests are very unreliable. Um, but in forecasting, we're not doing that. We're just trying to find models that give good forecasts. And there's actually no problem with the predictions from the model, provided that the value of the predictors in the forecasts are within the range that you used in the training, in the fitting. So if your predictor normally goes between 0 and 100, and you're trying to forecast ahead and the 
the future value of that predictor is also between zero and hundred, then the fact that it's collinear or close to collinear with other variables shouldn't matter. But if your future value is outside the range zero to hundred, uh, or whatever the historical range of the of the predictor is, then the forecast can be become quite unreliable. So as long as that's not the case, as long as your future values of the predictor are within the historical range and it's not an exact collinearity, then it's probably fine for forecasting purposes, even if it's not good for other types of statistical inference. If collinearity does turn out to be a problem, then there's a few ways you can deal with it. You could leave out some of the variables um, that are causing the problem, or you could combine them in some way. You can take an average of, of the two variables that are closely related. Sometimes it's, it's useful to take an average of two related variables and the difference of the two related variables. And you don't lose any information then, but you gain all of the, um, you, gain, you, you avoid the problems of collinearity between the two predictors.